Hello everyone, welcome to another battle report for my channel. Um, today we have a Kings of War battle report, my 44th report. Uh, this game is Kingdoms of Man, or Man, I don't remember which one it is, versus Varanger. Uh, this is a 2200 point game, scenario push, and this is the first game of the March Hare Tournament held in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, yeah, so game one. Um, here's a picture of my army. Uh, I am playing Kingdoms of Men, as you can see, um, on my display board. Um, and I'm pleased to report I actually got Best Painted for the tournament, um, which is kind of fun for me because I normally don't get to compete for Best Painted because my dwarves are uh, GW for the most part. So, yeah. So here's my army. Uh, Kingdoms of Men, I have two shield walls, a horde of footguard with the Brew of Haste, a heavy pike block horde with the Brew of Strength, a regiment of knights with caterpillar potion, uh, two regiments of berserkers, one of them with the fire oil, a troop of arquebusers with the piercing arrow, a beast of war with the ballista upgrade, uh, three siege artillery pieces, an army standard bearer with the warbow of Kaba on a horse, I forgot to mention the horse, um, a general, or two generals, uh, both with horses, one with blade of slashing and one with mace of crushing, and then a wizard on a horse uh, with the bane chant upgrade, the swapped fireball for a lightning bolt, and the inspiring talisman. I'm playing a Varenger. I misspelled it, but what you're gonna do? Um, his army is as follows: two sons of Korgon regiments, uh, one with elite, one with the vicious item, and both of them with headstrong and fury. A uh, horde of the fallen with dwarven ale. Two troops of tundra wolves. One mounted sons of Korgon uh, with the caterpillar potion, headstrong and fury. A dire fang rider horde with brew of sharpness, and I believe they also have headstrong and fury. Uh, anything that could take Headstrong and Fury took Headstrong and Fury. Uh, Magus with the Inspiring Talisman. A Chieftain on the Dire Fang with Wine of Elvenkind, Headstrong and Fury. And last but not least, Herja the Fallen. Uh, so deployment looks like this. From right to left, we have his uh, Knights, Mounted Sons uh, in the woods. Uh, and then we have a Sun Regiment with the dogs behind him. A Magus next to him. The Fallen are in the woods over there. Um, and then we have... Dire Fang Riders, uh, another, the other sons on foot, um, dogs behind them, Herja next to them, and then way on the left is the uh, king on a chief, or chieftain on a Dire Fang. He doesn't fly, he just has wings. For me, from, I guess we'll go from left to right, um, on my very edge, I got my Beast of War, I have my Berserker Regiment. Uh, my knights are in front of the fence. The army standard bearer is next to them, and the arquebusers are touching into the woods. Um, there's a general right behind my arquebusers. I have a shield wall out in front of my pike horde. Uh, three artillery pieces in the back. My wizard's in the back. Um, my foot guard horde is in front of my wizard. A uh, general out in front of the foot guard. Another shield wall out in front. And uh, my berserker is rounding off my edge there next to the house. Uh, so this is what deployment looks like. Uh, this is a push scenario. Um, everybody just had one extra token to drop, or, or to you know to, to play, and there was one in the middle. So my token went on my uh, foot guard horde, I believe, and his token went on his um, uh, sons of Corgan on foot across from my foot guard. So basically, all the tokens are right in the middle. Uh, turn one, we roll off, and I believe I win the roll. Um, to go first, and with my Caesar artillery, I always pick to go first because um, I can generally touch the opponent right away. So I move up uh, very, very cautiously on this side. Um, I don't, I don't need to engage my opponent. I have him sufficiently outranged. Um, I can just hang back and and wait for a couple turns. As you can see, I'm some stuff just inch up a little bit uh, on this side. Um, my Push my berserkers up onto the hill again. I'm just moving up a little bit. I don't even know if I move my beast or not. He's just going to take a couple shots. Uh, I'm shooting and I land a rock or two um, on the dire fang riders. The dire fang riders were were an obvious choice for me. They're height three, so they can't hide on most of the board. Um, they're also really expensive with the brew of sharpness on them. I think they had on them, and so. It's just a, a really, really easy target. Plus, they're slow, so I'm going to get at least two turns of shooting them. So it was, just, it was a great target for me to have. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm actually glad when there's a target to shoot at. 
But they're fine. Um, so we move in to Varanga turn one, and he moves up. Um, obviously less cautiously. He has he has a need to commit um, and engage. So he he moves some stuff up. You know. Uh, you know, and on this side, just trying to put those dogs out, trying to bait me into charges, moving his knights up just enough so he's in charge of me and I'm not in charge of him because of our angles. And you can see on this side again, he just he basically is just coming up um, as fast as he reasonably can. Um, he doesn't pick up that token in the middle. His dire fangs are just are just standing on it. And then the one thing you can't see is here his chieftain is way down at the bottom left, kind of trying to come around the house. Um, but the only problem with it is, yeah, he's he's nimble, but he's only movement six, so he's, it's going to take him a long time to do that. So turn two, you you can see where his chieftain is. Uh, Kingdoms of men again. I, in fact, I probably a lot of some of my units move forward, and some of them actually move back. Um, I don't need to engage him. I am not. I'm not in any hurry. Um, my shield wall does charge his dogs on the hill, which is fine. Um, that's 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 what they're there for. Uh, my other shield wall move up to chap up his dire fangs because I don't I don't mind my I don't mind the dire fangs charging my pikes but I do not want them charging the, the foot guard so they're um, where they are there won't be room for them to move between the two shield walls when I bounce back an inch and on the other side you can see movement too I march my beast of war up which gets him out of the line of sight of the knights so that's why that that thing's out there checking um he can't. He won't be able to probably charge anything next turn. But now he's way up, and he's going to start being a problem. Um, I'm, I've inched my knights back a little bit, so they can't be charged. And I move my berserkers up to bait a charge from his knights, um, because he has, he's going to have to do something about those berserkers at some point in time. Um, shooting. You see, I shoot the dogs. I've got my Hercule boosters, and I, I move my mage over, um, and I pick up the dogs, which is really good. Um, I didn't need them coming in and hitting my knights and holding me up. Um, and in the middle, of course, my my elite crack troop of shield wall just, I think, do a damage or two or something. It's it's pretty trivial. So, actually, yeah, this is men too, but I said Frank. Frank or two, it's fine. Whatever. So, movement. Um, he charges my shield wall in the middle. Um... I think this is still men too. Yeah, this is still men too. So ignore this. Ranger two for real this time. Um, he charges his knights into my berserkers because he's he's got to do something, <clears throat> and he can't just keep moving back or out of the round. So he charges them. Um, his fallen move up because I don't think they're in charge range of anything. His uh, sons of Korgon move up, and the Magus is walking behind him, keeping everybody inspired. Um, yeah, in the middle you can see his dire fangs charge my shield wall. And his dogs go back into my shield wall, and his Corgon sons move up. And you can see in the bottom there, uh, bottom left, his chieftain on the dire fang is kind of trying to make his way around the house. Um, but it's just, it's going to be too late by the time he gets anywhere going that way. Uh, shooting, I didn't put a shooting mark in here, but he, he lightning bolts my mage and does the damage. So that's, that's fine, my mage is okay. Um, you can see Herja there flew up to uh, chaff the... Um, Pikes. She couldn't charge him because she couldn't see him, but she flies up to stand in their way. Um, his knights do 11 damage, which is actually kind of a poor showing um, for his knights, but they pick up and they, they kill my berserkers. Um, his dogs route my shield wall, which is expected, um, and his dire fang route my uh, shield wall, which is, of course, again, expected. Uh, so this is what it looks like. You can see his... Knights at the top, well, you can kind of see pivoted to face my knights because, well, and that's an obvious thing that's going to happen. Um, and everything else is just kind of hanging out. So turn three, turn three. Um, I don't have really good pictures for turn three, so I tried to summarize as best as I can. Um, my knights charged and killed his knights. Uh, they got really lucky. Well, they got pretty lucky, yeah. Um, I rolled really well, and they and they happened to have picked them up, which was huge because because his knights are a lot more expensive than mine. Um, so we picked those up, and and then I overran, which you'll see being a problem later. Um, I'm chaffing up his, trying to chaff up his sons of Korgon with my uh, army standard bear there. Um, over on this side, um, I did some shooting at his dire fangs, and I wavered them, if I recall. And my general charges his 
sons of Corgon on the hill um, to essentially chaff them up. Yes. So that's that's what it looks like. So I didn't Varanger turn three. I didn't get good pictures here. Um, again, sorry. Uh, his his um, sons of Corgon because I overran with my knights could do a pivot charge into my knights and ignore my army standard bearer because I was far enough forward that they could do a pivot and not hit her and crash into him. His magus goes to stand in front of my beast of war. Um, and then, and, and in this instance, my, um, he does do way more than 12 damage to my knights, uh, but he does roll double once. So he doesn't, he doesn't take my knights off the board, which was really, really unfortunate for him. Because that was a clear mistake on my part, and he, he earned those knights. Um, his fallen in the middle had charged my army standard bearer, um, and wavers him. They just I think I think he just rolled really badly, and wavers them. Um, and then his sons of Corgon on the hill charged my counter charged my general and killed him. And then he didn't make the overrun into the foot guard. Which I think he needed like a four or something, but he rolled like a one or something like that. So, um, and on the bottom there, you can see his dire fang is turned around um, to start facing towards the middle, because he's not going to make it around that house and get into do anything useful before the game's over. Um, so that's what it looks like after Varanger three. Um, yeah, that that night charge for him was just up at the bottom was just really unfortunate. I, I do not do not enjoy that rule. He he earned those knights fully. At least they should have been wavered. Anyway. Um, oh, and the other thing he did, he charged Herja into my mage, but he rolled pretty bad, so my mage is fine. Well, she can't cast, but she's, she's fine. So there's another shot of that. So, uh, humans turn four. Uh, humans turn four, my knights counter charge, because why not? Um, my beast of war goes into the magus. Um, in the middle, my... I back my general up because he's wavered. Um, the only mistake I make is I back him up too far so that when my pikes charge his fallen, I have to clip the woods. So, something to remember, kids. Um, my mage just ignores Herja and just walks over here because she's inspiring. Um, I double charge the sons of Korgon on the hill. Um, my berserkers do have to go through the woods so that it's hindered, but, you know, still pretty good. And my foot guard go in the front. Um... Looks about right. Um, okay, yep. So that's that. Shooting, um, shooting my uh, siege artillery. Finally, pick up their. Finally, they 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 finally pick off the um, dire fangs on the hill, um, which wasn't surprising. I mean, they've been being shot at for like every single turn. So um, that's a really good that's a really good payout because my siege artillery, all three of them are cheaper <laughs> than this, and they they're still alive doing stuff. So uh, good benefit. Um, one of them shoots and hits this guy over here. Uh, the chieftain, but he's fine. Uh, my uh, beast of war routes the magus he was fighting, and my knights. Um, I'd put a little bit of damage shooting at these these sons of Corgon on foot, but my knights roll pretty decently, and then I ended up rolling like a ten or like a nine on the on the on the break, and since that magus was dead. They didn't have any inspiring, and so the knights picked them up, which is just huge. I mean, it's just huge. Um, not not only was I probably not going to win this side, or at least you know it was going to be a tough one. I, I I just completely eliminated him on this side of the table. Uh, in the middle, the sons of Corgon route, which is probably expected. That's pretty elite infantry smacking them up, um, and then they reform like that to face the chieftain on the dire fang. Uh, and my pikes um, don't do much. Uh, they, I think they, because they go through the woods and they're they're hitting something with pretty good defense. They just kind of bounce it a little bit. So you know, it's about that. Uh, the end of movement four. So Varanger four. Um, he double charges my foot guard with the uh, Herja and the uh, chieftain, and then he counter charges my pikes with his fallen. Um, Herger and the Chieftain do a lot of work. They get 14 damage on my foot guard and waver them. Um, but the um, Fallen don't do great on the pikes. I mean, 
that's that's pikes. You're charging them in the front. It's just it's rough. They just don't have enough attacks to knock down a horde like that. Turn five. Um, my foot guard back up because that's all I can do. I do some reforming. My pikes counter charge the. My pikes in general charge the fallen. Yep, and then everybody just starts moving over um, to help in the middle because it's. I do have two tokens at this point, but they're both on a very wounded foot guard unit. Um, shooting, again, my mortar is just just doing work. Pick up the um, Cheatin on a Dire Fang. I mean, his nerve isn't great, so it's about two to th two rocks with some relatively little luck will get him. But those, I think in combination, those mortars probably picked up 500 points of the enemy. Um, yeah, it's just that's just one thing. You just can't leave them alone. Like that's that's the whole point of this army. A little bit, it's like you just can't leave those mortars alone. It's too dangerous. Um, so he picked those up. So that's great. Um, obviously, I'm just ignoring Herja because no one can charge her outside against the mate. But that's not going to do any good. Um, this double charge because my pikes are counter charging. Um, not although I did fail my bane chant. Um, the combination of the pikes and the general pick up pick up these. Uh, other guys pretty well because again they're not inspired um so that's what it looks like a Varenger turn five he sends herja his only model left back into my foot guard because they are really really hurt uh and not surprisingly um herja picks up my foot guard and it looks like that so those ignore the ignore the the, the waiver token up there but those other three tokens on that hill are push tokens um fortunately for me it's only turn five so I have plenty of opportunity to pick up some more tokens. So pick up tokens I do. Turn six, um, men. My berserkers go up and pick up two tokens. Um, my general charges Herja, because why not? And my knights go up and pick up the other token. So he's going to get another turn, but he can't kill two units with Herja. So my general, he, I think I bane chained my general too, but you know, Herja's just a beast. It doesn't matter. Um, so Varenger turn six. He goes. He sends Herja after the unit that makes sense because my knights have an enormous amount of damage on them. I just marked them to 99. Um, and so of course Herja picks up my knights and the token drops. Uh, so that's what it looks like at the end of Varenger turn six, and we're also turn seven. And there is a turn seven, which for me is fine. I was going to win anyway. Um, this actually turned out to be advantageous for me because then I can do this. So um, Herja gets triple charged by a beast of war. A regiment of berserkers and a horde of pikes, and I probably could have fit a general in there on the other side too, but it wasn't necessary. Well, I didn't think so because then I finally got my bane chant off on my pikes, um, and so not surprising, we brought Herja, which is actually a moral victory for me because I've never actually killed a Herja before. So that's what it looks like at the end of the board. It's uh, just me on the board. So. Of the results, it was a clear Kingdoms of Men victory. Um, I, I knocked my opponent off the table. Um, for tournament wise, it was an 18 to 2 win. The tournament was on a 15 10 5 basis and then adjusted. Um, I got. I didn't get a maximum adjustment because um, that would that'd be a little harder because he did kill some stuff of mine, but um, I got a good, a good tournament adjustment. Um, some thoughts. But the game um, before this tournament, I was I was contemplating what was going to be hard for my kingdoms of men list to deal with. Um, one of the things I was generally nervous about was Herja. Um, Herja and Basusu the Vile too are both um, pretty beastly individual characters that I don't have a lot of tools to deal with. Like I have I have my two generals on foot, but. They can go hit them and, and stop this person from flying, but they're they're still movement ten, you know, nimble. Like I can I can kind of disrupt you, but you can still just run away. Um, in this case, I think my opponent was a little under aggressive with this Herja. He should have probably uh, been up picking up my mortars, and as a, with my next point, my mortars performed very well. Um, I didn't take a calculate of how many hits I actually did, but I bet it was I bet it was a little over six. Is they were shooting almost every turn and had good targets almost every turn. Um, like I said, those dire fang are high three, so you can't hide them behind the hills. And I don't care about cover, so it's just yeah, it's a good show. Um, 
it was a fun game. Uh, my opponent was was fairly well, uh, good spirited throughout the whole thing. I mean, when you when you kind of get picked off the table by things like mortars, it, I find it to be disheartening a little bit because um, it's something you just can't deal with for a lot of people. And having to be killed by something you can't deal with is a little rough. But he was it was good. He he, he maintained it through the whole game, and and that's I give him I give him kudos on that. So um, two more games to follow. Um, obviously a really good start for my tournament, uh, or the tournament, I guess not my tournament. Um, so we'll get those out as soon as we can. Thanks for watching and goodbye.